It always strikes me whether the team and the other stakeholders have the holistic view of the work they are doing, which is so important for the successful development of any product. This overall picture can be achieved by a technique called user story mapping. Hello everyone, I'm Nitika Ori from Management Plus. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. In this video, I will discuss three important questions around user story mapping. What is user story mapping? Why to use user story mapping? And how to do user story mapping? For better understanding, we will also look into an example. So let's get started straight away with what is user story mapping. User story mapping is a two-dimensional visualization of a work to be done in a project. The horizontal dimension represents the product roadmap and the vertical dimension represents the priority order of all this work. In other words, user story mapping is a better way to represent the work your project needs to do for the product you are developing. We can also define it as a user-centric approach with respect to the representation of work keeping the product vision in mind. It is a journey which customer takes throughout the product life cycle. Now, as we can see here, the x-axis represents the order in which the product will develop, while the y-axis here shows the priority of the activities which will be required while we are trying to complete a feature or a piece of work in this product roadmap. Now we know something about user story mapping. Let's head forward and answer another important question that is why user story mapping. Previously, when user story mapping technique was not introduced, the only view teams had was a flat backlog. Though it had all the stories and epics, still neither the team nor the customers would visualize the journey product is taking. Hence, a matrix view was required which could actually show the activities along with their priority. And this is where user story mapping entered. It provided an easy way to envision a huge backlog from customers and end users perspective. Having this understood, now we can relate how helpful this view is for the teams. Firstly, priority setting. Creation of user story maps help in arranging the stories into prioritized work log. Priority tickets are arranged vertically such that highest priority is always on the top. Second, easy communication. User story maps help to have an easy and much more effective talks on the upcoming work with different stakeholders. Third, vision. Arranging user stories via story maps help all the stakeholders to have much more clarity on the scope of current or subsequent releases. Fourth, effective planning. Sprint plannings or backlog grooming activities take a lot of time if the user stories are not organized. User story mapping arrangement is an efficient exercise, very effective in making these planning sessions a lot easier. Now we know the answer to two important questions that is what is user story mapping and why do we use user story mapping. Hence, we are ready to move on and see how to do user story mapping. Of course, user story mapping is not a quick task and might need multiple meetings for division of work and then prioritizing them. Product owner plays a major role for user story mapping creation. Let us try to divide this process into steps for simplicity. Step 1. Identification of epics. Identify your epics to be a part of user story mapping. These epics will form the topmost row. Under these epics, user stories can be placed. Note that along with spotting our epics, we also need to gather knowledge around the workflow of our project because these epics should be placed horizontally 
such that they depict the progress advancement of your project or in simple terms display the product roadmap. Step 2. Decomposition Work with your team to divide big blocks of work to smaller pieces and identify manageable smaller sized user stories. If you already have the backlog created, then you are good to go. You can further divide these user stories into tasks and subtasks. Step 3. Identify the priority of user stories and other activities so that they can be arranged properly. That is, vertically in the decreasing order of priority under their corresponding epics. Step 4. Slicing to swim lanes. Divide the work based on timelines. That is, divide the work such that what falls into a particular sprint or release is at the same horizontal level. For better understanding, let's take an example. Here, I'm taking an example of a shopping website product team who wants to build their user story map. We will take only three major functionalities for simplicity. Let's say we have a roadmap to build login logout feature first, followed by creating a search bar for searching products from site, and finally build a shopping cart page. Now, login logout feature, search bar feature, and shopping cart feature can become the epics here. Let's add user stories under login logout feature. Let's say the user story under login logout epic is as an end user, I want a login page with username and password. So this one goes under login logout epic. Task under it could be need to code for username and password text boxes. And this task comes under the user story I just described. Also, before moving ahead, just wanted to let you know to write good user stories, please go through my video, how to write user stories. You can find the link below in the description. Okay, let's move ahead. Another user story under login logout epic could be, as an end user, I want login page to do authentication with my Google account. Again, I will place it here under login logout epic, but I will place it under the previous user story because it has less priority than that. Activity here could be need to code for a two-factor authentication implementation. So this comes the last. Similarly, we can fill other parts of the metrics. Now we know that this is the order of product roadmap and vertical order is the priority of corresponding activities under each feature. Once we are done with all this arrangement, we can divide our user story map horizontally into a timeline of when the team can accomplish this work. It can be sprints or releases based on your processes. And now our user story map is good to go. It's ready to be used by the team. I hope all this information will help you while you create or read user story maps. That was all I wanted to share. If you like this video, please press like, share it more and more. Do subscribe the channel and thank you for watching.